Hi, and welcome to our worship today. This is online worship with South Norwood Baptist Church. We're a church based in South London. We've been established for 130 years. Although it's only really been in the last six months that we've been using YouTube in this way, in this strange season that we find ourselves in. In this video, we're going to be doing many of the things that churches do. We're going to be reading from the Bible. We're going to be praying. We'll be thinking about what the Bible means for us today and having some songs of worship. And we encourage you to join in as much as you can, as is appropriate where you are. We're going to hear some words from the Bible now. They're from Psalm 95. And following that passage, we're going to have some songs of worship, as the psalm encourages us to to praise God together. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God. Yeah. 
Because we believe in Jesus, that changes how we see the world. We believe we should be sharing the good news that he came and lived and died. But also we should be making a difference in practical ways. And one of the ways we do that is by partnering with different agencies. And so today Tony, one of our members, is going to update us about the work of International Needs, one of the agencies we partner with. And then he's going to lead us in some prayers for International Needs and for the work around the world. Hello everyone. Uh, due to uh, the wonders of technology, uh, I'm able to uh, lead your prayers this morning from sunny Devon. Um, that wouldn't happen, would it, if, uh, if we were all meeting together? So perhaps there are one or two little advantages. Uh, we're going to be thinking today about uh, what's going on at international needs and praying uh, for the situation there. Because so much is happening uh, at international needs at the moment. And I'm going to have to summarise uh, to be brief. And it's safe to say that if we think uh, COVID-19 has disrupted our lives, it's disrupted the lives of our friends abroad much, much more. Uh, most of our projects, of course, are halted. Schools are still closed. Lockdown's not been lifted in any of the countries we are working in in any significant way. And many people are really struggling because many families rely on the meals their children get at school to enable them to manage at home. They don't have a Marcus Rashford to prod their governments into action, they're just left on their own. And just at the time when there's extra mouths to feed, very often the family breadwinners can't work uh, and so they've got no money to buy food. And there's no such thing as furlough payments or other government funding to help. At International Needs, therefore, we've moved our fundraising, if you like, largely to running a COVID emergency appeal. 
Um, and this is primarily providing uh, the immediate needs, providing food for families who have to often have no other source of food. Uh, it's being used to supply the needs of pastors, food for pastors. Uh, most pastors rely on the weekly offering from their church in order to buy their food. It's a, it's a hand to mouth existence as it is for most people. And so with churches closed, with no services, uh, they too would be starving if, if we weren't able to help. So is there any good news? Well, I think there is. Um, certainly our medical centres in Burkina Faso and Uganda, they're working flat out. Uh, neither of them are treating COVID patients, that's not allowed by the government, but certainly in Burkina Faso, malaria is still a major problem. In fact, it's worse this year than it's been before and they're dealing with that. Uh, and in, I'm pleased to say that in the maternity unit, record numbers of births are successfully being made uh, and, and, and we continue to have a very high safety rate in terms of, of, of the births at the, at the medical unit. So that has really, really come into its own. In Uganda, uh, the ambulance that we bought is now being used to take medical treatment out to villages which are under lockdown. Uh, and that's uh, being done under, the, uh, uh, under a government plan. So we're able to help uh, provide medical treatment uh, where otherwise it would not be uh, available. Because of course, when a country like uh, any of our countries, Uganda, is under lockdown, um, medical treatment becomes just far more difficult. Then uh, some of the work we did before COVID is, is really bearing fruit. The Ugandan Water Project means that there's 25 villages in the Bukwe district that now have a safe and ready water supply, which enables them to do things, hand washing, sanitization, that sort of thing. So that is a really uh, big benefit for them. And the livelihood product in, projects in Nepal mean that some of the remote villages are far more able to um, manage for themselves uh, when they can't get their food and basic needs uh, from uh, other sources. So uh, we need to be able to restart those sort of projects um, as soon as we can, as soon as the governments of the countries allow them. Uh, and finally, uh, because we're no longer able to uh, visit our friends abroad, we're not uh, able to have any uh, Go Global trips this year, and indeed there won't be any next year, um, we're holding regular Zoom catch-ups with uh, our friends abroad. Uh, which means we're actually able to keep in touch with them probably better than we have before. Um, I've met, if you like, uh, our, our friends abroad, all of them, uh, during the last few months, uh, and it's great to be able to keep in touch uh, with them in that way. But it's time we pray together, isn't it? Let's pray. Loving Father, we praise you that you are in control. We may not fully understand what's going on, but you do. And we can be confident that in everything, you're working for the good of those of us who love you. We thank you that our IM brothers and sisters abroad are remaining so positive and seeking to use COVID as an opportunity to demonstrate your love to their communities. We pray for the work of the medical centres and maternity unit in Burkina Faso and the work of the ambulance in Uganda. We pray that those whose bodies are healed may understand the spiritual healing that you offer. We pray for our friends in Nepal, coping with an exceptional monsoon, causing many deaths and much destruction, in addition to the problems of COVID. We pray for Andrew and Lucy, who led our worship here at Holmesdale 15 months ago, and who are now looking after over 40 children in their home, children who decided not to return home to their own homes during lockdown. And we praise you for their spirit of care and generosity. We pray for Nathan and Source and Basali as they minister to the needs of their church and community in Cairo and support the needs of pastors and still find time and uh, an opportunity to take food and love to the Syrian refugees they've been helping over the past months. And we pray for the leaders in each country for Shiva Dungal in Nepal, Justice Mwanda in Uganda, for Jocelyn in Kenya, and Jean Kone and his family in Burkina Faso. Encourage them, we pray at this time, as they lead their staff teams in such difficult times. Keep them all safe and enable them to continue to serve and demonstrate your love in their communities. In your name we pray. Amen. As we said at the start, we're glad that you've tuned in today and you've joined us. Maybe you're watching for the first time, maybe you're a regular part of our church. If you'd like more information about who we are 
and what we believe. Do get in touch. Contact details will be at the end of the video or you can go to our website southnorwoodbaptist.org. And don't forget you can follow us on social media. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss any content. If you're watching this on the premiere you can join in the chat or you can leave your comments at the bottom. This week we invited some of our church, some of you are in our database, if you're not let us know if you want information, but we invited some of our church to send in greetings. We realise it's been six months since we physically met together and in many of the books of the Bible, the Apostle Paul in the letters, he greets different people in the church and so we're going to have some greetings now as part of our worship together. Church from the Turner family. Hope you are all keeping safe and well. Uh, I'd just like to read the first verse of a famous hymn for you. Jesus bids us shine in a clear, pure light, like a little candle burning in the night. In this world of darkness, we must shine. You in your small corner, and I in mine. Yes, hi everybody. Um, I used to sing this song. I can remember from childhood singing it in uh, in Sunday school and uh, and throughout throughout my childhood. And then I remember that once we I was preparing with some other people a um, a youth service and we we planned to to sing this. And the pastor's wife was was, was there with us, and she started to play it and and we started to sing it. And then we had that last line of this uh, this song. We're talking about in, in the 1970s you in your small corner and I in mine and she kind of stood up, bolt upright and as you, she thought, oh this just isn't in the spirit of the times this is you talking about you know, the, the early to mid 70s and I suppose it wasn't really, thinking of somebody in a small corner or a child or, or anybody in a small child because it's really about being together at that time and sort of people working together in unity and all that and then in the 80s it was something similar, we had something called Glasnost and Perestroika which, which was from abroad and, and really this song kind of went into the kind of into, into, into oblivion really. But thinking about this song now it, it has more relevance in this day and age and in, in, in this particular time because we are in small corners in a sense and we can't meet together. Um, but the actual words and certainly the, the first words are that Jesus could just shine with a cute clear pure light like a little candle burning in the night it's still very relevant because uh, it's still a dark world that we live in and uh, we must shine we must shine for jesus i want to just uh, say greetings to everybody and uh, we bless you and uh, I'm just looking forward to the time when we can actually meet together we're not in our small corners and we can um, we can share fellowship together but until then jesus bid us shine with a clear pure light Hello church family, I want to take the opportunity to greet each and every one of you. It has been a while, hasn't it? Anyway, I pray that each and every one of you are keeping well and safe and really looking forward to the time that we can all meet again in person. Bye. Sunny good morning to you church family. It's been a while since I've seen many of you in person, but it has been great to see some online. It was especially great to see some of our children and young people the other day on a Sunday school Zoom catch up. Life has been a little bit challenging, but it's also been in many ways full of God's blessings. My Connect group meet regularly and are a great source of support and inspiration, and I love you all. Give my thanks to Pete and the deacons who have continued to engage us at all and in many ways and um, been a really good leadership in this crazy situation that we find ourselves in. And I want to give thanks to John from my nephew who's been receiving your videos because his church hasn't been producing anything like that and he really loves them. So till we meet again everyone, thinking of you and praying for you all, my love.
Greetings Church, this is Kobe, Irene and family. Hope you're all well and staying safe. We pray that this pandemic will be over soon so we can all see each other. God bless you. Hi Church, how are you? It's Beth here. Um, how are you getting on? Are we well? Um, the kids are well, they're back in school. Um, I'm working from home, which is great. Um, and uh, yeah, we are doing fine. We are missing church. The kids are missing church. I miss the hugs, I miss the chats, I miss the sermon, I miss the biscuits, I miss the tea. Uh, I miss everybody. Um, I just wish we could be together. It's understandable in the situation, and I just pray that you're all well and healthy. And, um, and even though you know the odds are against us right now, um, you know God will um, you know help us to overcome this. You know I just pray that you continue to have the courage, you continue to have the faith, um, and you know this will soon come to an end. And um, by God's grace, um, once more we will come again. Hello, I wanted to send love and happy greetings to my wonderful church family. COVID-19 lockdown has made me realise just how much I miss you all. I have wonderful memories of our church worship together. Lockdown hasn't been easy for me. There are times when I've felt low and I'm sure some of you have experienced fear and sadness through the isolation and the restrictions of everything. I came across these words in Deuteronomy 31 verse 6, which I'll paraphrase slightly. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. We should always remember this, as nothing gets better than the Lord's love. God bless you all, and I'm hoping to see you all again very soon when this is over. Bye. Hello church, good morning or oh, good evening. Um, it's been a long time since uh, lockdown and we haven't seen each other except on the video. Uh, it's very unfortunate situation, there's nothing we can do and uh, the second wave again coming with the good part, nobody's dying or people, the rate of death is very very low, we thank God for that but um, I hope life will go back to normal and then we'll be together and fellowship like one family and um, you know have tea and coffee and catch up with everyone uh, the kids miss Sunday school running around after church I miss the tea and coffee and then um, hopefully things will get better and go intervene and then we'll be back together and have a normal church and a normal life again wish everybody the best and have a lovely week and a lovely weekend as well God bless you all this is Eric. Good, bye bye Hello Church, we are a light on the hill, the hill of South Norwood and SE25. I hope that uh, God is just blessing you at the moment. I'm praying for you all and I hope to see you soon. Hi Church, hope everyone's doing well. 
uh, Linda and I, we are doing well. The last week has been quite eventful for both of us because Linda and I, we welcomed our little girl, Nina Anjali. So here is Nina Anjali, born on 11th September, uh, on Friday. So both Nina and Mama are doing well. I'm doing well too. And um, yeah, hopefully we will meet all of you uh, whenever that is. But I look forward to the day to introduce Nina to you all. God bless you all. Bye. Bye. Thanks to everyone who sent them in. It's great to be connected. And we do connect in different ways through the week in our small groups and Zoom meetings and all sorts of things. We are, however, working towards some opportunities to gather again in person in our building. This will remain our main Sunday worship, but we are looking at some small communions. Are we conscious that guidelines and ways of working may change? The government is constantly reviewing. So if you're in our database, watch this space. We will be communicating over the next couple of weeks. Thanks to everyone who gives financially to our church, especially in this difficult season. The Bible talks about generosity. The first Christians were generous. They held everything in common. And that reflects who we believe God is. And so if you'd like to give, here are our details now. We're going to hear a Bible reading today. And our Bible reading is from the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. And so we're going to hear from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. Hello church, this is this week's reading from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. After this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. In our videos, we're currently in a series called Who We Are, exploring our vision and values as a church, but hopefully, even if you're not a regular part of our church, something in this will be appropriate for you as well. So far, we've thought about the fact that we want to be a welcoming church. And then last week, Aubrey helped us think about what it means to be a worshipping church, and then it's all about Jesus. Today, we're thinking about one of our values, and it's this, to be a multicultural church. We believe that we are called to be a multicultural church. And that's not just about our location. We are in a diverse part of London, one of the most diverse cities on the planet. But it's more than that. It's not about trying to be relevant, or trying to be politically correct, or woke, or whatever you have to say these days. But actually, we believe this is a theological conviction. It's about who we are, something we're called to be. How do we say that? Why do we say that? What does that look like? Why is this one of our five values? The Bible reading we heard was from the book of Revelation. And it seems to me that that's one of those parts of the Bible that people either love or they avoid. 
Now, I don't think sometimes as Christians we've helped ourselves about that. Some of the ways Christians have used this book and interpreted it have not done us any favours. But that's probably for another video. It's different to the rest of the New Testament. It speaks in a different way. It uses lots of pictures, often drawn from the Old Testament and elsewhere. It's a different way of writing and often when you first read it, it can be overwhelming and confusing. The passage we heard is from Revelation chapter 7 and unsurprisingly, that's between Revelation chapter 6 and Revelation chapter 8. No great secrets there. But in 6 and 8, it's about opening seals and judgment and there's all these pictures. But chapter 7 is like an interlude and that's one of the things you find in Revelation. You have one theme and then there's another interlude and it goes back to that theme. And chapter 7 begins with the writer seeing this pause in the action. And then he hears something. And he hears about 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. This is a symbolic number of completeness. But then in verse 9 that we heard read for us, he sees a great multitude. And again in Revelation, it's often a contrast between what the person hears, John who's experiencing this vision, and what he sees. And what he sees is this multitude that no one can count from every nation, tribe, people and language and they're standing before the throne and before the Lamb. The throne is God's throne and the Lamb is Jesus. It's introduced earlier in the book. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so in this vision, standing before God, standing before Jesus, is this multicultural, multilingual, innumerable, uncountable crowd. Chapter 6 ends by saying, who can stand? Chapter 7 is this great crowd and they're standing, they're worshipping, they're before God, they're dressed in white as a sign of purity. That's not why I went for a power shirt today. They're waving palms as a sign of victory. Maybe you know about Palm Sunday. Maybe this is a, a nod to that. Perhaps it's looking back at a Jewish festival called the Feast of Tabernacles. But this is a crowd that's very diverse. They've not been morphed or transformed into a monoculture. They've not lost their identity. Here's how one scholar puts it. The vision of the great multi Jude is one from which ethnic and linguistic variety can still be distinguished. The vision of the great multitude is one in which ethnic and linguistic variety can still be distinguished. This is no monochrome vision of the clean saints in glory, but rather a representation of the full diversity of humanity before the throne of God. This is a blow your mind kind of multitude. You know, maybe you've been in a big crowd, probably not recently, because we're not allowed to be in big crowds under COVID restrictions, no more than six at the moment. But maybe you've been to a football game or a protest or a big event. Well, this is like that, but even more so. And it's drawn from every part of the world. And they're here because of Jesus. This is the fulfillment of the promise to Abraham, right back in the first book of the Bible. Abraham was promised descendants that will be too numerous to count, like the grains of sand on the seashore, like the stars in the sky. But he was also promised that he will be blessed and he will be a blessing to all the nations, all the peoples on earth. This phrase that we heard read, this phrase from the book of Revelation about people from every tribe and tongue and nation, comes in different combinations and in different ways seven times in the book. That's also significant if you read Revelation, the number seven. And it's a way of describing the whole of humanity, the whole breadth of the cosmos. In chapter 14, verse 6, the angel is given the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on earth, to every nation, tribe, language and people. Back a couple of chapters in chapter 5, 
John's vision is of Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And they sing a song to him in heaven. And the song is this, you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom of priests to serve our God. In other words, the work of Jesus dying on the cross was to purchase, to redeem people from the whole of humanity. This multicultural, diverse body. This wasn't just a Jewish thing. This wasn't just a Western thing. This wasn't just an Eastern thing. This wasn't just for one group of people. This was for everyone, for the whole world. Someone put it, while salvation came through one man of one tribe or one nation, the kingdom will consist of people from every nation. And it matters now. One of our values as a church is to be multicultural, to reflect this heavenly reality now. To be a people from every nation, tongue, tribe, background. Yes, that reflects the postcode where we are, but I think you could argue in the light of this and many other New Testament passages, that whatever your socio-economic setting, all, ch all churches should be multicultural and diverse, as much as they can be. It's only through Jesus, it's only in the cross, that we can be reconciled. There's a lot of talk at the moment about racial justice and reconciliation, and rightly so. And we must do all that we can. We must end mistrust and mistreatment of people based on their background, on the colour of their skin, on notions of race. In this moment, we must say, Black Lives Matter. But the reality is, for us, our only hope is Jesus Christ. Because it's in him that we're reconciled to God and to one another. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians says the dividing walls between Jews and Gentiles, the great divide of the time, has been broken down. In Jesus, in his death and resurrection, one new people is made. We believe that all people are made in God's image. And Jesus died. What does it say in the most famous verse? For God so loved the world. He died for all the peoples of the world and beyond to bring everything back in alignment with God. These statements challenge our own prejudices, our own privileges. They should cause us to search our hearts. Paul speaks about the church reflecting the manifold or multicultural, multicoloured wisdom of God. And so we've chosen to make this a value for our church. And one day we will stand before Jesus with this wonderful multitude drawn from every tongue, tribe, people, nation, background. It's going to be amazing. We're going to watch a short reflection called What Do You See? Quick warning, if you're photosensitive, it does go quite quickly, quite flashy. But it's worth watching if you can. What do you see?
Lord, we thank you that you made us in your image. We thank you that you died for us all. You died to purchase for yourself people from every tongue, tribe, nation, language. And we don't lose that. We don't lose who we are when we come to Jesus. We are one in you. But we maintain our identity. So we give you thanks, Lord Jesus. Amen. the end of our worship today. I hope you are still with us and you've made it this far. I encourage you to connect with one another afterwards, to keep in touch, keep in touch with us, keep in touch with one another if you're part of our church. We're going to pray a blessing as we draw to a close. May we know the blessing of the Father who draws people from every tongue, tribe and nation. May we know the blessing of the Son, the Lamb of God, who by his blood purchased people for himself. And may we know the Holy Spirit with us, empowering us, enabling us to live your way. Go with us, we pray. Amen. We'll be back on this channel on Wednesday for our midweek thought. And these Sunday services premiere at 11am. Have a blessed week. Go in peace. Keep in touch. Take care.